today's starting lineup from Milton in goal, wearing number 35, John Driscoll. At defense, number 15, Jared Conning. At defense, number 11, Mike O'Toole. At left wing, number 14, Dylan McDougal. At center, number two, Garrett Allen. And at right wing, number 10, Nolan McGannis. And the rest of the Milton. They look big. Wild yeah. Jacks. <laughs> Did he say Wild Jacks? In goal, wearing number 30, Nathan Petty. At defense, number six, Zach Sylvia. At defense, number 16, Justin Kershank. At left wing, number 17, Grant Aiden. At center, number 20, JL Bridges. At right wing, Peyton Sylvia. And the rest of the guard. Foxers. There we go. This guy started his New Year's Eve drinking a little bit early. This guy started his New Year's Eve drinking a little early. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome into the ice box. We are at AZF Arena. They said it is slightly warmer than it is outside. I am skeptical of that fact. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, the one, the only athletic director. Oh, of, a, I'm now the one not, and only. The not so newly named. <laughs> Athletic Director of Brockton High School, Kevin Caro, Mr. Caro. It's been an interesting start. The boxers coming in at two and two. We've seen a couple of blowouts and they're coming off a five to two win against yeah. Acton Boxborough. Jekyll and Hyde, I talked to Coach Cunningham about it earlier today and um, I, I think the key is gonna be to the defense to not get too many shots on Nathan. And we'll see, Milton is usually pretty good they look big and um, let's get ready for action so Brockton's starting five Jalen Bridges Frank Aiton Peyton Sylvia and on defense Zach Sylvia and Justin Crookshank Zach Sylvia is the boxers leading scorer with eight points on the air three goals and five assists for the captain starting goaltenders it is Nathan Petty the sophomore in net for Brockton and a two-on-one able to get back nicely is Bridges. And now Peyton Sylvie the other way. Not enough mustard on it for Atten. Starting goaltender for the Milton Wildcats is John Driscoll, the junior. He's played in two games with six goals against on 51 shots. Milton is wearing their away red jerseys, red pants with white trim all around the boxers in their home whites, red trim around the black numbers. Oh, kept it in. In the slot, and now number 10 launching a oh, shot. Glove a saved save. by Petty. Nice save. Rebound dangerously to face off dot, but Frank Eaton was in the right place at the right time. And Brockton 
clears it all the way down for an icing. Well, we got the music going in between the play here. Is this a New Year's Very Day nice. special? Saturday matinee special, we get the music. This is a, if we don't get people out of their seats, then they're probably going to freeze to them. It is slightly warm outside. It is a whopping 13 degrees at puck drop for this game. Clear. A little bit of snow starting to come. A little bit of, little bit of snow, partly cloudy. It's one of those weird ones. Days like this that I ask myself of all the places I could live, why, why here? Athletic director in Honolulu sounds pretty good right now. San Diego. Oh, we got a good move by Nathan El Shami, but Milton's defense a little bit too strong on the sticks. Couldn't pick a holiday tournament like in Miami for the basketball team. Next year, we'll go down south, maybe to Attleboro. <laughs> this one deflected, there's four boxers in the area. Milton comes away with the puck. A oh, shot wow. and a rebound, goal. It's going to be number nine, unassisted Ross Dexter, the sophomore, his first goal on the year. And Milton is up one nothing, yeah, two and a half minutes into the first period. Little careless down in the zone. Petty made a good initial save. And the rebound found the stick of Dexter. They are going to credit and assist to Declan Dr Driscoll, a senior that is listed as both a forward and defenseman. Well, they're going to have to answer here. They did this against Falmouth the other day where they got down early. Immediately getting a shot off and able to cover up is Driscoll. Well, my nephew's a goalie and um, plays for an AAU team, the, the Boston Advantage. My brother today told me he saw 83 shots. How many did he save? That's um, the question. He saw 83. He saved 75. Respectable. I think that's still good for like a 920-something save percentage. Yeah. Uh, my brother has one of those uh, tickers, you know, how the, when you see how many people come through the door. So he keeps track of the shots, and the number was 83. If you are just joining Brockton Community Access, this is game nine on the week. The abnormal <laughs> amounts brought to you by the Oliver Ames Holiday Tournament. Eight games in three days. Who is that scheduling genius? Absolute pleasure to bring <laughs> you that one. Well, that pales in comparison to what Bill Matthews, the athletic director over at Olive Rames, told me his slate was like 22 games in four days over at their gym. Oh, that's right. They had a JV tournament for boys. They had the girls tournament and the boys tournament. Another shot, pad save with a loud boom as the puck hit the pillows of Petty. Eaton able to clear out. Brockton once again victorious in the holiday tournament after the off year in the last year of the Rotary Holiday Tournament 2016. Yeah. I don't think anybody was beating BC High. 
early on in the season last year. No. Milton trying to catch the boxers in a change. Oh. Unsuccessful, but the other way is Ben Martin. Martin's shot, blocker saved by Driscoll. Five minutes into the first period, it is Milton one, Brockton nothing. And the boxers' fifth game of the year, starting the season off with a 5-4 loss to Falmouth. A spirited comeback effort in that one for the boxers who just ran out of time. Oh, that's good play. That Who is was that? Number 13, Al Birmingham. It's Birmingham still owns the wackiest moment of the season as he lost one of his blades <laughs> in that game against Falmouth in the first period. One of the actual metal blades fell off of his skate. Oh, it, it, it cracked, snapped. the whole thing just snapped right off. Nothing says sports like strapping two razor blades to your feet <laughs> and skating full speed into a 215 pound high schooler. Possibly some glass and hard plastic boards. Remember when they had no helmets? I don't think it was ever in high school that they, I think high school always, at least as I can remember, always had a helmet. But the NHL, you go back to the old school and very it's little as far time. as protective gear. I think the Howes were the last one to not wear a helmet. Craig McTavish. McTavish. Why I know that, I have no idea. <laughs> but I do. When he was with Edmonton. Early 90s, right? I think so. Yeah. Gordy Howe. As Brockton sends one through the slot, Scorty Howe suffering the effects of playing so many hockey games without a helmet on, oh. suffering from dementia, ultimately passing away due to that. Longtime player for the Detroit Red Wings. If you ever get a chance, go out to Detroit and catch a Red Wings game at their new arena. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, I'd love to. I mean, I want to put on the hit list, I want to go up to Montreal and see the Bruins play up there and just make a whole swing of that area. Toronto, Montreal, come back to Detroit. Throw Columbus in there, too. Right on the way, Buffalo, head home. I'd like to visit, I've got the short list, all the original six stadiums. So I still haven't been to Madison Square Garden, which I definitely want to. I just love New York in general. And throwing in a Bruins Rangers game would just be icing on the cake, but put it on the list, Matt. I got to go to MSG. With the the Nesson TV crew at one point. And there's so you get the Rocky Stairs in Philadelphia. Yep, which I have run. Which Whenever, whenever you go to Philly, you have to run the Rocky Stairs. Yep. So MSG in New York has what they call the Elephant Walk. So it's a giant circular ramp underneath the stadium yep. that they used to have elephants in Cirque du Soleil and all these circuses walk up. And that's how you get to ice level. Okay. And it's the long and winding road. And it's underneath. It's underneath. Uh-oh. Here's a three-on-one now. Boxer's getting back, but a shot and an excellent poke check oh, by Nathan Petty. And this one back out into the neutral zone with 6.45 to go in the first period. The ultimate hockey vacation for me is all original six. I'm thinking Florida Panthers right away. <laughs> yeah, Florida Panthers. <laughs> Tampa Bay Lightning sounds good. Yeah. 
Coyotes. Dallas. Uh, Dallas I can do without. Vegas. This time of year it's cold. Anaheim I could do. Going to have a penalty. Penalty for. Number 15 oh. of the Wildcats. And he knows it. Whatever. whatever Jared he Carney did. is like, yeah, you, <laughs> you caught you, me. You got me. Uh -huh. Oh, there was no argument at all there. No hands up in the air Usually saying, Usually you get a little, what did I do? Yeah. Like James Harden the other night against the Celtics. What? what did I do? I only threw my shoulder into Marcus Smart's head. It's not a foul. Cross-checking is oh. the call. Brockton on their first Come power on. play. Aiden with the shot. So it is a two-minute minor penalty. Now, did we ever figure out when that changed from a minute and a half to two? We did not. You didn't go we home the, and research We, we get the Mad Dog research team working <laughs> on it feverishly. It could help us out to find, I know. <laughs> you want something done right? You know, oh. you got to do it uh -oh. yourself. Delayed offsides waved off against Milton. 115 left on the power play. Zach Sylvia with it up to Peyton Sylvia. Peyton over to Aiton. Come on, give him a one timer. Right there at the top of the circle. Aiton back to. Sylvia. Oh. Aiden with oh. a shot and it goes wide. 44 seconds on the penalty. Zach Sylvia, top of the key, deflected. Oh, that should off be a trip. Skate. Sylvia whiffing uh -oh. on Petty's the gotta come out. Why is he not coming out to get that? Brockton's defense able to recover nicely. Zach Sylvia. Slides it ahead for Ooh, Bridges. Bridges out. with a good spin move to get out of the way. And now a shove from the goalie Driscoll into Ben Martin. This one loose, and it squirts out into the neutral zone with seven seconds on the power play for Brockton. El Shami with oh. a shot. This one goes high off glass. Back to even strength, Brockton with possession in the Wildcat zone. Now Milton takes it behind their own net. And able to send it all the way down. It will go for an icing. 3.58 to go in the first period. It is Milton over Brockton, one nothing. The goal from number nine, Ross Dexter, assisted by Declan Driscoll. almost the time of year to start talking about the Winter Olympics. Yeah. Very, very, very disappointed in the NHL. Yeah. I mean, but I knew it was coming. I mean, as far as if you're an owner and you shut down your team for two weeks and if somebody gets hurt and they come back, I mean, I get it. And the sticking point, at least according to reports, was insurance policies for players as we have a shoving match. And Driscoll is down in the Milton net. So NHL players not allowed to participate in the 2018 Olympics. Mm -hmm. Alex Ovechkin has said, screw that, I'm going anyway. Which is interesting. That leads to an interesting question. If he does pull that off, does it lead other players to? Will oh, I mean, he's, he's a very valuable guy to Washington. I don't think they would terminate his contract based on that, but he would technically be in violation of his contract. Yeah. So I'm sure there'll be some sort of monetary fine. And I'm sure the Russian Federation will <laughs> gladly yeah. Yeah, but Russia, pay for that. But Russia's banned from the Olympics. <laughs> The Winter Olympics, right? I, th I forgot that it was the winter and the summer. Yeah, they're, they're banned. 
So I don't know who he's got who he's got to play for. Oh, Excellent great glove save. saved by Petty. The refs lost sight of it. Isn't that right? I mean, Russia has that been banned. That is true. Russia. They're saying athletes can participate under the, the Olympic flag. Yep. Participation trophy. <laughs> El Shamiz headed to the box. And what what did he do? Very frustrated. Very frustrated is Nathan El Shamiz slamming his stick. Chatton went over to calm him down. We well, could have a two on one here. Oh, a nice break. Patton makes a nice move. He's in a long. Oh. That was a great move. Hooking the call against El Shami. Shot. No good. Milton able to recover. Now, one timer is whiffed. Get it out of there. Get it out. Patton will barely do that into the neutral zone. Two minutes left in the first period, 115 on El Shami's penalty. Deflected wide by number 14. That away. That is Dylan McDougal, and Brockton sends it all the way down the ice. Jack Sylvia coming up with the interception. His oh, shot, shot, blocker save. But Driscoll. A shot high and wide deflected by the stick of Peyton Sylvia. Milton regaining possession on the half boards. Milton shot, hit a couple of skates out in front and now Able to clear, but not out. Oh, off the helmet. Right, right in the mush. And could you believe that there was a time when goalies did not wear helmets? <laughs> Petty's having a strong game for the boxers. There's 16 seconds left on the power play for Milton. One minute even left in the period. Petty with another blocker save. This one all the way down the ice. How sad is it I actually might go outside to warm up? I was thinking about <laughs> it. I was thinking about it, firing up the car for a little bit. No, I'm just saying standing outside Stand, st to warm up. Power play over, back to even strength. A shot, blocker save, Petty. Rebound to the end boards, Justin Crookshank picking up the loose rubber. Milton able to recover now with 30 seconds to go. And the boxers able to clear it into the Milton zone. Now 20 seconds to go. Sylvia able to keep it in very nicely before it goes across to Dexter. Five seconds to go. Milton has it in the neutral zone. Might get one last second shot. Oh, no. They do. <laughs> and it went off Sylvia's stick to the end oh, boards. Oh, boy. The buzzer sounds. Brockton escaping the last second Milton opportunity. It is one to nothing. Mr. Cairo, Brockton not out of this one by any stretch of the imagination. No. I, I just think they just got to keep plugging away and playing physical and you know they'll create some some opportunities and hopefully just need to catch a break or two it is one to nothing Milton over the boxers at the end of the first period we're going to step aside take a short break and bring you second period action right after this Hey Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. 
Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming! We're going biking! Yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey. I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into AZ Alfarino for second period action between the Milton Wildcats and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Joined alongside my broadcast partner, the athletic director of Brockton High School, Kevin Caro. It is one to nothing, Milton over the Boxers coming into the second period. Lone goal scored by Ross Dexter of the Wildcats. There's been a couple of power plays in either direction. All have been unsuccessful. Milton wearing their away red jerseys, red shorts, white trim all around. The boxers in their home whites, black shorts, red trim around the black lettering. Brockton coming into this game at two and two. Boxers coming in third place of the Walpole Holiday Tournament. Losing to last year's Super 8 contenders, the Walpole Rebel, Rebels, eight nothing in the first game. And then defeating Acton Boxborough in the consolation game, a score of five to two in that one. Jekyll and Hyde season for the Boxers. Before that tournament, they defeated the North Quincy Red Raiders by a score of eight to nothing at North Quincy. And all of that was after a five to four home season opening loss against the Falmouth Clippers. This one's going to go all the way down for an icing. Nathan Petty for the Boxers has had an excellent game thus far. Number of acrobatic saves for the sophomore keeper of the Boxers. Nathan El Shami, who was in the box for almost the entire last two minutes of the first period with a hooking call with the puck now in the corner. One timer broken up by Ross Dexter. And Declan Driscoll's backhanded pass finds El Shami in the neutral zone. He winds it up and pounds it into the Wildcat zone. There's a little bit of history between these two teams. Milton defeating the Boxers handily in the first round of the MIAA playoffs a few years ago. This, of course, game nine on the week for Brockton Community Access Sports. Been an interesting week. Four games at Oliver Ames on Wednesday as this one goes down for another icing to each Thursday, Friday. As the Boxers defeating Cardinal Spellman in the men's championship game of the Oliver Ames Holiday Tournament. And now the Boxers and Milton going at it here at AZF. The wild fun facts from that championship game. Nobody believed me when I told them that Cardinal Spellman was a Division III team. And that was before redistrict, redistricting. 
That was the first ever matchup between Cardinal Spellman and Brockton High. And Abu Kaba of the Boxers had 23 points and 16 rebounds as he put up a career night. This one sticks save, bounced up against the helmet, loose in the crease. And Driscoll able to cover it up for the faceoff. It's warming up outside as the flakes continue to fly. Whopping 16 degrees. As we approach the new year. Zach Sylvia's shot deflected out by Peyton Sylvia who had his stick slapped in the wrong direction by number 15 of the Wildcats. Crookshank fighting for it in the corner. Brockton with it out into the neutral zone. Milton pounding it right back. This one loose. And Petty able to deflect it to the end boards. Now another shot blocker save Petty, this time to the half boards on the near side. Milton still pressuring. Brockton able to break it up. And they have a three on two rush up ice. Sylvia's shot and a stick save by Driscoll. Peyton Sylvie is going to recover in the corner. Kirkshank takes a huge shoulder, and there's going to be a penalty against number 14 of the Wildcats. That is Dylan McDougal. Number 10, rather, Nolan McManus. Is it going to be a major is the question. They're going to call it a cross check. They've got the wrong call there. I'd say it was more of a targeting to the head. Yeah, the stick was not involved in that hit as Milton clears it all the way down the ice. McManus. Doing his best interpretation of James Harden the other night. Icing on the power play against the Boxers. One twenty-six left on the power play. Eight fifty-eight in the period. It is. Still one nothing, Milton. All the way down, second consecutive icing on the power play for the Boxers. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. safely into the Milton zone with a minute even on the power play. Sylvia stopping it at the blue line. He pops him up for Atten. Atten can't control it. Peyton Sylvia recovering within the blue line. Now to Atten, back to Peyton. Peyton shot off of Dexter's skates and Milton. 
sends it 200 feet down the river. Atten with some space. Unable to get a shot off, spinning back to recover. Now a no-look pass down to Jalen Bridges. Atten with it, now his shot, and it goes wide. Rebound all the way out into the neutral zone as there's 10 seconds left in the power play for Brockton. Atten's pass for Zach Silvey off the mark, even strength. Seven and a half to go in the second period. And it is 1-0 Wildcats. Another icing against the Boxers. Bridges comes over to the bench frustrated. New players lining up on the wrong side of the boxers zone. Ben Martin. So this one hard around the boards and out Al Birmingham trying to catch up with it. Icing now against the Wildcats. This one loose in the crease and a good save by Driscoll covering up for the faceoff. Peter Sylvia in to take this faceoff. He will go against Garrett Allen, the senior forward. Leading scorer of the Wildcats with 10 points on the year, three goals Seven assists, a one-timer stick save by Driscoll and Milton out into the neutral zone. Now Birmingham recovering and I believe an offsides called against Milton. El Shami with a little bit of a uh, embellishment. Now Milton's pass is off the mark. Ben Martin out into the neutral zone. Good passing by the Wildcats, but Peter Sylvia in the right place at the right time, swinging his stick around to loosen the puck. Almost a breakaway for number 14, McDougal. Couldn't catch up with it. It's an icing against the Wildcats. Shot, unable to get any elevation on it, was number 21 of the boxers. That is Seamus Sheehan. Now shot, and a save by Petty 
up into the protective netting. Both teams changing out partially. Five minutes to go in the second period. It remains 1-0 Milton over Broughton. This one sends up ahead. Colin Icing on that, hit the net. A quick stoppage. Quick stoppage for the cover by Driscoll. He almost whistled it before it went into his glove. Sylvia back to the blue line for Crookshank, but now it's a three on one. Sylvia with a dive and Petty with a save. Frank Atten trying to do it all himself. Spun down, he draws the penalty. And Brockton's gonna go on the third power play of the night. Holding the call against Tommy Noonan, the senior forward. He is in the box for the next couple of minutes. Peyton Sylvia is Milton able to poke it loose and all the way down the ice. Zach Sylvia now flying in. One timer for Bridges as he went down to one knee. Flashy, still loose and unable to keep it in at the line was Peyton Sylvia. Brockton's best opportunity of the night. Peyton Sylvia to Jalen Bridges. Bridges back to Sylvia. Sylvia slammed into the boards. Now all the way back is Zach Sylvia over to Atten on the far side. Atten leaving it behind for Zach Sylvia. Sylvia's stick is slashed. As this one sent all the way down the ice. 40 seconds to go on the boxer power play, 315 in the second period. Aiton coming away with it to Crookshank. Rockton's gonna tag up. They do just that. 10 seconds left on the power play, 240 now in the period. In and off sides against Milton. Back to the blue line for Crookshank, and the shot doesn't make it all the way through. Dexter intercepted by Birmingham in the neutral zone as Brockton tags up. Back to even strength, 2.15 left in the second period. 
A bomb is pad saved by Driscoll. The rebound is between his pads. And he squeezes him for the faceoff. Milton changing out all five. Peter Sylvia now trying to get it out to Birmingham. Pass deflected off the skate of Zach Sylvia. Set all the way down. Brockton's going to have a one timer from Zach Sylvia. Driscoll with a nice save. One forty-seven left in the second period. Rockin' pressuring. Nathan El Shami down low to Birmingham at the blue line. Pops him up. Now Milton able to gain full, full possession in the boxer zone. Milton back out after negating a boxer's opportunity. One minute to go in the second period. Birmingham with a soft shot deflected off the skate of Mike O'Toole. Offsides against the boxers. Forty-seven point seven. Sent through the slot, no boxer able to get a stick on it. Now Crookshank sending it high into the zone with 30 seconds to go in the second period. And it's a Milton break. Number four and alone, his shot is off of the glove of Petty, who came charging out of his net and to the end boards. Number 10. Nolan McManus on that Milton opportunity. Buzzer sounds and the second period has come to an end. No scoring to speak of in that 15 minute frame. It remains one to nothing. The Milton Wildcats leading the Brockton Boxers. The lone goal scored by Ross Dexter for the Wildcats. We're going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you third period action right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it. So make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Yeah. 
Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. I'll be right back. Hi. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home, just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into AZ AF Arena for third period action between the Milton Wildcats and the Brockton Boxers. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action high above the ice on a cold one here in Brockton. Nathan Petty, if you're just joining us, has had a phenomenal game in net for the Boxers, limiting the Wildcats to one goal. And the Boxers have not had much pressure, but increasingly in the last few minutes of the second period. It is one nothing Milton over the boxers coming into this third period. This is the last game of the week. A week in which we saw eight games over at Olive Rams for their basketball holiday tournament. The ninth and final, if there's ever 10 scheduled, I will put in my resignation notice. No double digits, no, no 10 games in a week. All fired up coming in this week as Brockton launches a slap shot from the blue line. All fired up for Postman to bring you nine deliveries after Christmas, picking up the Postal Service's slack. Postman has exactly one delivery out of nine this week. Batting a thousand. Zach Sylvia. Now Milton and Ross Dexter, the lone goal scorer. Another save by Driscoll. Crookshank takes the hit to move the puck deeper before Milton sends it all the way down the river, icing against the Wildcats. Sylvia to Aiton. Aiton out to Al Birmingham. Birmingham's shot was wide. Birmingham recovering to keep the puck out of the boxer's zone. Now Frank Atten makes a nice move. Atten keeping it himself. And another nice move is backhanded shot. 
Driscoll is down, where's the puck? No whistle yet, still loose. And a goal for Brockton! It's a tie game, that was a weird one. Driscoll made the initial save. It was somewhere underneath him. At one point we saw it between his pads. The ref's excellent awareness to not blow the whistle while the puck was not secured underneath Driscoll. And Brockton has tied it up with 12 minutes to go in the third period. I believe it's going to be credited to Aiton. We will await official word on that. Milton right back the other way. Pad saved by Petty. As it goes to the end boards, now loose in the slot. Now Birmingham going to be credited with the goal unassisted. All tied up, 11.30 to go in the third period. One goal apiece. Now a shot, this one trickles wide. Sylvia coming up with a steal. It's four on three up ice. Sylvia throwing it in off the glass. Zach Sylvia for the boxers. Now Peter Sylvia takes a hit to get the puck to Ben Martin. Now Sylvia slapping one wide to the left. Ten and a half to go. Brockton able to keep it in, at least initially, and this could be an opportunity for the Wildcats. It's going to outrace Ross Dexter. As Martin goes hard into the boards. Dexter leaving it behind for McDougal. McDougal now to Garrett Allen. And now McDougal, or Nolan McManus rather. Now a shot, stick save loose into the glove of Petty. And he covers it up on the apron for the faceoff. 9.35 to go in the third. All tied up at one. This one all the way in and a couple of players go spilling into Driscoll who pushes the net off of the moorings. Let us be the first to wish you a happy new year this game is on Saturday, December 30th. Milton with a takeaway. McDougal shot is wide. Icing waved off. Milton recovered it well before the hash marks. Now 
Melton cleanly into the Brockton zone. This is McManus working against Crookshank. Crookshank wins that battle. Crookshank slashed, but able to get the puck out into the neutral zone. There is no whistle or arm in the air. 8.15 to go in the third, all tied up at one. Brockton with the game tying goal out. Birmingham tapping in the loose puck a few moments ago. Now a shot off the post. Sylvia launching the shot. That rang the iron. Sylvia's backhanded shot saved by Driscoll. Rebound to the corner. Now Zach Sylvia tees one up. And this one might have gone off the stick of Driscoll to the half boards. And now Milton recovers McManus. Looking to send a streaking Michael Toulin on a break. Does not connect. But now a three on one if Milton can recover McManus beyond the goal line. No clean shot got off. I believe one went off of Petty's pads. It's Peter Sylvia dragged down to the ice. A slugfest on the far side between Peter Sylvia and McManus. Milton able to keep it in. And number 26, or Peter Sylvia, able to poke it out into the neutral zone. Brockton will change on the fly. A slap shot wide. Now the undersized Nick Landry, sophomore forward in for Brockton. This is Brendan Palermo, junior forward now for the Boxers. Six minutes and 15 seconds left in the third period, all tied up at one goal apiece, the Milton Wildcats and the Brockton Boxers. with it in the Milton zone. Now Crookshank launches one. That one well wide. Might have been looking for a deflection. Al Birmingham keeping it in. This one deflected off of the stick of Dante Massaro. Milton able to Clear it out into the neutral zone. They will change on the fly. Brockton trying to catch him in the middle of that change. Al Birmingham racing into the Milton zone. Unable to get a shot off on Frank Adden recovering nicely before Milton takes it back. Ross Dexter into the Brockton zone. His shot is well wide. The deflection off the end boards. The half boards a shot in. An excellent blocker save by Nathan Petty. Milton able to keep it in now with five minutes to go in the third period. Next goal could quite possibly win it for either side. Justin Crookshank behind his own net. A little bit of a miscommunication, but Al Birmingham able to recover. Now up for Frank Atten. Zach Sylvia back on the ice. He's one you gotta watch anytime he's on the ice. The defenseman with some serious prowess on the offensive side of the ice. Now Peyton Sylvia trying to clear this one. He's not able to do so. Ross Dexter to number 20, Tommy Noonan. Noonan loses it to the half boards where Frank Atten sends it out into the neutral zone. Now Atten lets it roll to Zach Sylvia. And now Crookshank. Dexter into the Brockton zone. To the middle for Noonan. His shot unable to get off cleanly, deflected off the heel of his stick, and now Atten for Peyton Sylvia, it's Peyton Sylvia, four on two up ice, Peyton Sylvia, Zach Sylvia, Jalen Bridges and Atten, and Zach Sylvia can't control the rebound, he had an empty net. 
This one bouncing around. It's a tumbling muffin into the far corner. Finally able to settle down is Jalen Bridges. Now Peyton Sylvia fighting for it. Milton comes away with it. It's number four, Declan Driscoll, all the way down for an icing against the Wildcats. 3.24 to go in the third period, and action has picked up quite nicely here at Asia. Save right off the faceoff for John Driscoll, the goaltender of the Milton Wildcats, covering up for the faceoff. Milton winning this faceoff out into the boxer zone is McManus. Al Birmingham pressuring him. Peter Sylvia comes up with the loose puck. A shot. And loose in the slot. Birmingham able to recover and clear it out. And this one out of play into the Brockton bench. So an offensive zone faceoff for the Wildcats. McManus winning the faceoff. A whiff on the shot from McDougal. Now McDougal with it in the corner. His spin around shot off of the back of the net. Now a shot off the glass. 2.45 left in an action packed third period. Brockton has tied this one off a goal from Al Birmingham. This one all the way through. McDougal didn't know it was coming to him or he would have had a phenomenal offensive opportunity. This one deflected wide. McDougal off of the skates of Justin Crookshank and Brockton finally able to get it out into the neutral zone. Zach Sylvia with it. Sylvia's attempted self pass goes to the end boards. Milton taking possession and Brockton changes on the fly. Justin, uh, Jalen Bridges, excuse me, forced to race to the puck to prevent a Wildcat scoring chance. Atten's stick checked out of his hands. No whistle. Now McManus in for the Wildcats. Stopping, spinning, and a shot deflected off the skate of Zach Sylvia. And now a block from Frank Atten. That is a big block off the skate of Frank Atten, and he is shaken up as he goes to the boxer bench, replaced by Nathan L. Shami. Justin Crookshank as Brockton just lost their top goal scorer, Frank Atten. El Shami has been playing with a B under his bottom all game. Zach Sylvia with it, makes a nice move to split the two Wildcats that were pressuring him. One minute to play in the game, one minute. One minute to go in the third period, it's all tied up at one. This has been a phenomenal third period as there's an icing against the boxers. If I'm Brockton, I'm calling a timeout right here. And they do. Count it in, one for the Mad Dog. Brockton calling their timeout. I would not pull Nathan Petty at this point. There's 53.1 seconds left. We are all tied up at one. In what has been a phenomenal third period of hockey here is the boxers trying to get above 500 on the year. Coming into this game at two and two. Two goals for Milton, Ross Dexter. That goal was assisted by Declan Driscoll. 
The goal for Brockton was Al Birmingham unassisted. Atten is back on the ice, good to see. After he blocked that shot, very shaken up, favoring his left foot. Petty remains in the boxer net. Bridges able to get the face off, but McManus takes possession for the Wildcats. His shot blocked away. Now Crookshank shoving a Wildcat into the boards is Garrett Allen head first. Now blocked and taken down, settled down by Crookshank. McMahon is able to spin with it before Zach Sylvia takes possession. Now 10 seconds to go in the game. All tied up at one, Milton with it. And this one across the slot, nobody on the receiving end for the Wildcats. Now Peyton Sylvia with some space, there's half a second left. And Peyton Sylvia is unable to get a shot off. And this one will end as a draw. Brockton moving to 2-2-1 two, two, and one on the year, able to recover. Al Birmingham with the lone boxer goal. Ross Dexter with the lone tally for the Milton Wildcats. It, it was an action-packed one here at AZ Arena to end off 2017. I call this a moral victory as the boxers playing from behind most of the game, able to recover, score the tying goal, and pressure for a majority of the third period. It's a 1-1 draw, the Milton Wildcats, the Brockton Boxers. We want to thank our cameraman for today's festivities, the one, the only, Mike the Postman Simmons, another delivery to you viewers of Brockton. But a 1-1 draw, the Milton Wildcats and the Brockton Boxers. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Happy New Year, and we'll see you next game. Coach Chris Cunningham, a spirited effort, especially in the third period by the Boxers. Yeah, I, my coach just told me they only had one shot in that third period. So uh, I thought we played very hard. You know, we played, uh, I, I challenged them for the one-on-one -on -one battles, really. I thought that would be the difference. Um, so, yeah, I thought it was a really a great period by our team. Uh, we did much better on, on the wall and uh, in the one-on-one -on -one battles, like I said. And uh, we found a way to get it get it through. Um, you know, it wasn't, wasn't pretty, but we'll take it. One of those scrappy goals. The situations that you can't really practice for, loose puck in the crease, scrambling everywhere. I think the refs had a part in that goal, not blowing the whistle. Everybody lost sight of it at one point. Take us through that goal. Yeah, you just gotta gotta keep battling and, until you hear the whistle. Uh, try and you know find the puck, get a stick on it, and uh, you know it's not easy. You got guys uh, trying to lift your stick, and you know uh, bodies everywhere, but. You know, you uh, keep battling, anything can happen, and, and uh, you know, it, it perseverance paid off. You have a few days off going into the new year before you're right back in action. You're 2-2-1. Two, two and one. It's been a pretty good start to the season. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with where we're at. You know, obviously, you can look back and say, oh, we could have done this, could have done that. But 2-2-1, uh, two, two and one, you know, uh, pretty good performances our last two times out. We're going to use that wall pole. We got beat up pretty bad, and so we're going to use that as motivation you know, to, to not get too high, not get too low, and remember if you don't work hard, you know, that's what can happen. Coach, congratulations on a good effort here today and a good start to the season. All right, thank you. Happy New Year.